You've heard of type 1 and type 2 diabetes, but what if I told you there was a type 3 and it's attacking your brain? Hi, I'm Dr. Rose Petrilla, the Primal Professor. Today we're talking about something very personal, painful, and powerful, Alzheimer's disease. For decades, we've been told Alzheimer's is just bad luck, part of old age, or tangled plaques that show up in our brain. But new science tells a very different story, one that puts you in control. And that story begins with one uncomfortable truth. Alzheimer's is now being called type three diabetes. So let's go back before the 1970s Alzheimer's was rare. It wasn't something people worried about, much less had to plan for. But in the 1980s and 90s, I remember I graduated in 1988 from college, the cases skyrocketed and they even got worse. Today, over 6 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's and now it's the fifth leading cause of death in adults over the age of 65. That surge mirrors the rise in obesity and diabetes and insulin resistance. That's not a coincidence, that's cause and effect. For years, researchers blamed the beta amyloid plaques and the tau tangles. These are microscopic debris that build up in the brain. But the drugs designed to target those plaques, they failed miserably. And billions of dollars later, we had no cure, no answers. Now we know those plaques are symptoms, not the root cause. In 2005, the researchers um, published a groundbreaking paper, and they described Alzheimer's as a form of insulin resistance of the brain. And they called it type three diabetes. And here's what that means. Your brain runs on glucose. But in people with Alzheimer's, the brain becomes insulin resistant. The neurons, which is the cell of the nervous system, loses the ability to use glucose as fuel. When the brain cells can't use glucose, they starve. But there's another layer. Insulin is vital for keeping the brain's mitochondria, those tiny little power plants inside each cell, in this case the neuron, running smoothly. And when insulin signaling breaks down, so do the power plants. The mitochondria produce less ATP, which is cellular energy, oxidative stress rises, and the neuron slips into a brownout. Long before you're in full-blown dementia, we see brain energy warning lights, brain fog, multitasking trouble, mood swings, word finding glitches. They're everyday signs that the neurons are running on a dying battery. It isn't a fuel shortage, it's a fuel access problem. And the gas tank is full, but the engine can't use it. And here's where it gets re even more tragic. Conventional diabetes treatments often worsen the problem because we keep feeding the body more sugar, more insulin, and more glucose than the brain can handle. So who's at risk? Anyone with insulin resistance, that includes prediabetes, type two diabetes, belly fat, high blood pressure, high triglycerides, and even PCOS. Women are especially vulnerable after menopause and those with the APOE4, that's me, that's a gene and that will increase your risk, but it's not your destiny. And the first signs aren't what you think. It's not forgetting your spouse or your street name. It's brain fog, which you know we talk a lot about on this channel. It's trouble with multitasking, mood swings, and struggling to learn new things. These symptoms can start decades before an official diagnosis.
Alzheimer's is diagnosed clinically. That means memory testing, functional assessments, and in some cases, brain imaging like an MRI or a PET scan. But by the time it shows up clearly on a scan, the damage is already done. That's why early detection and even better, early prevention matters so much. If you're worried, ask your doctor to test your fasting insulin, your HbA1c, and your CRP, which is an inflammatory marker, not just your cholesterol, and tell them you're having symptoms. So now here's another reason fat is so clinical to your brain, beyond just ketones. Yes, your brain is made up of 60% fat, but here's something even more fascinating. The brain produces its own cholesterol. It doesn't rely on dietary cholesterol. Instead, it synthesizes cholesterol de novo. That means directly inside the brain, mainly from two types of cells, the astrocytes and the oligodendrocytes. It's a mouthful. And through a series of enzymatic reactions that convert acetyl-CoA into cholesterol, this allows the brain to maintain a steady supply of that vital lipid, cholesterol, which is essential for the neuron membrane, that's the coating of the cell, the synapse formation, and that's where the, the transmission of an impulse goes from one neuron to the next, and the myelin integrity. All this is critical for your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system to work properly. So when you nourish your body with healthy fats, you're not just supporting ketone production, you're providing the raw materials your brain needs to maintain its architecture, repair itself, and to communicate effectively, transmitting those signals to the rest of the body. Okay, so now here's where we flip the script. Fat is not your enemy. Your brain is, again, made up of near, nearly 60% fat. It runs beautifully on ketones. Ketones are clean burning fuel made from fat. They don't require insulin. And when glucose metabolism fails in the brain, ketones can step in and save the day. That's why people on keto and carnivore diets often report improved focus, memory, clarity. The fog lifts, the lights come back on. I've seen it myself, and that's why I've gone on a keto diet, one of the reasons, and also a carnivore diet. And I will tell you, you have much better mental clarity. I did watch a show um, that I thought was very uplifting, and I wish more places uh, took this type of care. If you've ever known someone in a personal care home, you know the food that they provide um, are, is a very high carbohydrate diet. And there's this personal care home in Arizona that puts their Alzheimer's residents on a ketogenic diet. And guess what? Some of them improve. One woman, or many of them improve. One woman improved so much, they interviewed her, she was able to go back to her home. Dr. Brett Schur from the Medical Mind YouTube channel interviewed the gentleman who owns these personal care homes. His name's Hal Cranmer. I'll put the link in the description. That's not a miracle, that's metabolism. Keto doesn't cure Alzheimer's, but it gives the brain a fighting chance. So what can you do today? You can clean up your diet, cut the sugar, ditch the ultra processed foods, support your body with real fat, real protein, and real food. And most of all, remember, it's not too late. Your brain is listening to every bite you take. If this resonated with you, share it with someone you love. Alzheimer's doesn't have to be a mystery. It doesn't have to be your fate. Make sure you subscribe for more videos on metabolic health, insulin resistance, and the power of food to heal. I'm Dr. Rose Petrilla, and until the next time, stay sharp, stay strong, and stay curious. I'll see you in the next video.